I'm going to be reviewing this Lensgo 348C wireless microphone system. So this was sent to me by Lensgo at no cost, so thank you much to Lensgo for that. So make sure you go and check out the links down below, which link to their web page for all that for this thing. We'll do some audio testing. Right now I'm using obviously the built-in microphone on my camera. So what I end up doing once I actually get the system up and going, is I'll plug it into my camera and we'll do some audio tests and check some relative levels and quality and that sort of stuff. Let's unpack it. So let's take a look at the back of the box first. When I was actually looking at this, I did notice a few issues with the specs. So if you look at the specifications here, it's got a few weird things stated, like input frequency range, 40 kilohertz. Well, I think it means 40 hertz to 15 kilohertz. There's a few little weird things like that there, which just don't quite make sense. Voltage, 400 milliwatts. Um, okay. I think it should mean power, maybe. Whilst it's transmitting on a transmitter, 3.7 volts, obviously 3.7 volt lithium cells inside. There's a few little weird bits of terminology and stuff that are used on this. So the RF power output is stated as being 12 dBm, or the t this should be a big B, not a little B. Yeah, I'm just being picky, but you know, there's a few little things like that which aren't right on the packaging. Just sort of maybe think, oh, okay, well, there's a few things lost in translation there. So let's look at the accessory pack. We'll get this simple thing out of the way first. So we've got a manual for it, instruction manual. Well, this is lots of Chinese. And there's the English part. So it's got the same information there about the FPC antenna. Built in lithium, yeah, it's a bit better in there. Voltage, again, it says voltage 400 milliamp hours. There we go, 400 milliamp hours. That's more like it. Whereas in here, it says 400 milliwatts. So that should be milliamps. So, yes, errors. So this manual is a bit more correct in that way. Got some troubleshooting information there if you have trouble getting it to work or have issues with something. So you just set it all up. Now these kits come with different uh, configurations, like the one I've got here is just a single transmitter. You can get ones which you've got dual transmitters. So anyway, there's the manual. Hopefully you're reading that backwards. Okay, so the manual is more accurate than the box, so the box has got some errors on it. So lens go, you need to fix that. So the box is quite cute in a, in a way, it looks like mimics the actual device itself. It looks very similar to it. There's a USB-C port on the side here, so that's for charging up the units. And if you can, I don't even quite see it, you can just see it there, look. There's like a little indicator there. There's holes, so when you've got the thing on charge, you can actually see the indicators on the device inside lighting up, so you can see when they're charging. This is what's inside it. So we've got the transmitter, which has got the fluffy thing on it, and the trans and the receiver. So you can see it's got these pins inside, and this kit obviously allows for an extra transmitter as well. So if you've got dual microphones, you can charge a whole lot at once. So these also have a USB-C port on them as well, next to the power button. So this is the receiver. It's got an output on there which is used to go to your audio capture device and you've got volume controls on here as well. Now this actually has a little display on here, a little OLED display. Here's the transmitter version, very similar design but this has also got a TF card, so a TransFlash card, so an SD card you can plug in there and you can do recording on the actual microphone. So if you're worried about potentially losing signal quality or even as a redundant backup you can also have this thing recording onto the SD card at the same time as you're capturing it with your camera or whatever you're doing there. Got this little clip here which you can unclip. There's the actual microphone there. It's also got a microphone input jack. So if you want to use a different microphone like a lapel mic or something like that instead and you tuck this away, you can do that. So it's a bit more flexible in that way, it's quite nice. Nice little design choice instead of assuming you're always going to use the internal mic. Because these things are a bit bulky, you know, they're just, oh, they're not that big, but you know, they are fairly small really. But it's a lot bigger than a standard lapel mic. You know, that's what I'm trying to say. So that's those. So the actual accessories we get with it. Got a USB-A to USB-C connector. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you've not been here before as well. We have a 3.5mm TRS extension cable, which is obviously extendable. Um, this is obviously for the output of the device to go to your camera or audio capture device, whatever you're using. We have another one here, which is a TRS to a TRIS, which is a mobile phone. 
So it's got two rings on here. That's what's called TRRS, tip ring ring sleeve. This is for mobile phone catchers. You can plug this into your mobile phone instead and use it that way and catch audio on your mobile phone if you're using a phone instead of a traditional camera. And here we have a magnetic disc, but also a metal disc, which is used on these because these have got magnets into them and you can magnetize on. Is that the magnet? Or is it, which size is the magnet? Yeah, the magnet's in here. This is just a metal disc. All right, so you can put this on clothing or whatever and you can then pinch it through your shirt and you put it on the inside of your shirt and then you can just hold it on that way you don't got any pinholes in your shirt or anything like that. Not relying on clips. So that's quite nice. This side does have a clip, also it's also magnetic. So if you wanted to, you can actually put that on there if you wanted to. Um, but this is a size which fits the shoe mount on most cameras. Right? So you've got the hot shoe mount on the camera, or cold shoe depending on what your camera is. This would actually slip in there. So you can slip that onto the hot shoe mount and then just let go of it. And then you can just attach it to it and then you can take this off when you want to. It does spin around, it's not locked in place. I mean, that may give you some issues, potentially. I don't really see why it would though. Not really. Once you've got a lead on it as well, it'll help hold it straight in, in the orientation as it needs to be in. Okay, so that's that. Let's power these things up and have a quick look. So first we'll power up the receiver. The bottom's buttons over there. So it's actually kind of meant to be this way up. I mean the text is this way and that way, which I don't like. I wish it was all in the same orientation. You sort of think, oh, which way up does it go? Well, it goes this way. Kind of. Because when you boot it up, it's also got the same text issues. But the text is sideways. So we've got a battery set indicator. My lighting here is drowning out. It makes it hard to see. Let's get a bit closer. Okay, so you've got RX battery. You've got two indicators here. It does also do saving of its display by turning itself off. Let's tap the button. It's currently set to mono. Um, you've got transmitter battery indicator levels as well because the transmitter is currently not running. That's why it's flashing. So it's not linked to anything. And then you've got a volume level here as well. So each time you push that it changes volume level so it goes from minus 6 up to plus 6 so 0 is the standard but if you need more volume you can increase that I don't see why you would not not really just want to have it up all the way all the time and let your camera do auto gaining or set your camera levels to get your best noise levels otherwise if you've got this turned down and then your camera gain is turned up you don't introduce more of a background noise or you have a higher noise floor so generally you want to have the source as high as you can and then gain it down at later stages. So I'll get the transmitter, we'll turn this on. There we go. That is linked. So no transmitter no flashes, interestingly. If I turn the receiver off, the receiver's now showing a battery level. But again, my lights are tending to drain it out. And a receive signal strength level as well. If I turn this off, and now the transmitter's warning that there's no link. So we're going again. Now it's got a link. Did this detect a bug then? Hold on a second. Because before it's still flashing, even though it had a link. So that's right. So it's flashing to say there's no link. And I'll do this one. Oh, now it's doing it. First time it's still flashing. Interesting. I if I cause a bug. I don't know. Anyway, it should be on when there's a link. Something to watch out for, maybe. And here we've got a record light, so well we call button. It's also an indicator, so if you hold it down, it comes on. So that'll be recording. Now I don't have a card in it yet, so I don't actually have any audio going into it. But that would be recording. I think that'll flash as well once it's actually recording. And if I look at this, you see um hopefully you'll see it. There's nothing really sharp in here right now. There you go. So there is an audio level on there, but it doesn't actually mate up with the audio coming in. Right, so if I'm walking, talking straight into the microphone, you're not really seeing much going on there. Right, so it's not actually a great display as far as telling you that it's definitely getting audio, because it's definitely not working that well. Um, you know, it barely shows anything up. So that could be improved. Just, you know, you think you would be showing a bit more, saying yes, it's definitely getting audio coming in. But, uh, so I think that's a bit of a down point. Let's look this up to the camera. Alright, so it's now plugged into my camera, so the camera should now be capturing the audio from this device. So let's just check the screen, make sure it looks like it's right. It's probably working. So obviously this is on the desk in front of me, it's probably, you know, nearly arm's length away. If my arm's stretched right out, you know, it's uh, nearly arm's length. It's also meant to be on you, so if I bring it closer. So if I stick on my chest, say about here, right, that's probably where I'd likely put it. 
basically sitting on my chest and um, that's the level we're going to get now again i've got my volume set at six on the receiver and the camera i think is set for automatic gain so it should automatically adjust the volume level in order to allow for optimum volume so i'm going to check my camera settings now and see what they're on so yeah, let's check my camera settings and yes my camera is set to automatic level control it seems to work fine like that i've always had no problems with my camera using that particular system it seems to work quite nicely basically it tends to be full volume anyway back on my chest again that's there like that and that's how it's going to sound i think it sounded fine um again further away you can hear the volume difference hopefully or maybe the quality difference of the voice between being on my desk over here and actually being on my chest over here so it could be quite interesting to see what the playback ends up being like but um it's looking pretty good i think now it's about to take a 32 gigabyte sd card or up to 32 gigabyte sd card so that's what i'm going to put into it as the biggest one because i've got one sitting here i might as well put it in and that way I don't really have to worry about any instances where maybe I'll have it recording in the future and maybe potentially fill up the card because I just don't tend to get the captures back off because it's a bag up system. So I'd rather actually have it capture it just in case and not use it. We shall pop that in. Yep, cool, so it doesn't stick out, it's all flush inside the casing. And now it's flashing to say that it's recording. Excellent. That seems fine then, doesn't it? So let's actually stick this thing on, shall we? So I've got the little disc here. It's also got like an adhesive pad on the back of it, I think. So you can actually stick it to something instead if you prefer. You know what? Let's put this on. I should. And we'll locate the magnet in the back. There we go. There we go. So that'll sit just like that. I mean, we we'll put it maybe somewhere else, but... Now, I did actually want to get a black one, but fortunately they're out of stock of the black at the time, so the choice was in yellow or white. And I quite like yellow. Yellow is one of my preferred colours anyway. So, that way, yellow things are hard to lose. You tend to spot them a bit easier. So I thought, I'll wait for yellow. And, um, yeah, unfortunately it stands out a little bit. That's working all right. Now, I thought, great, I could use the system not only on my camera here for my video capture like this, but I could also potentially use it for doing my live streams. Because when I'm doing live streams, I'm moving around the room a little bit and in front of a computer over there, or I'm over here repairing something, and you know, booking a piece of test gear or some electronics repair I'm doing over here. And moving around means I've got a microphone in between the two spots on desk, which captures a lot of the room noise and room echo. It's not as nice and crisp as I'd like it to be. I mean, it's okay, but it'd be nice to do a better quality audio capture i'm thinking right i could use this so i think i could probably plug in the receiver into my computer using the usb port and capture the audio through that well i've had a quick look at this particular situation and it turns out the usb port does not present itself as a audio capture device when you plug into a computer so a bit of a shortcoming there i mean if they did that this would be a really good system so i think if you're talking to a camera or whatever like this it's absolutely fine but if you're trying to do other things as well and try and keep the audio the same so the audio matches if you're doing a screen capture or something like that you want to keep the same microphone set up so it sounds exactly the same i can't do that so at least not with my current setup i might have to get an audio capture device which can accept the audio from this device but it's a shame that i mean it's got a usb port on there if i just had it so that presented itself as an audio capture device like a microphone my microphones on my desk here they are usb microphones that it's plugged in, it's, like, it's got a USB-C port on it. Mind you, it was using the cable that came with it. Maybe this isn't a data cable, maybe this is only a power cable. It's possible, I should eliminate that choice. So I actually have over here my Saramonic microphone on my desk, which uses a USB-C port. So what I actually might do is unplug that cable, plug it into this unit and see if it presents itself that way as well. Just in case I'm misinterpreting something i've seen but i do know with the supplied cable on that receiver unit it did not present itself on my computer as a audio device which is a real shame because i would have liked to use audio capture on that as well on my computer so i'm going to go and try that now just to make sure that i'm not wrong about this just it all plugged into my computer using my same cable using my ceremonic usb microphone and it still didn't show up as a usb device so Yes, the USB port does not act as a USB audio input device on a computer, which is a real shame. That's a real missed opportunity there. You know, it's such a simple alteration to that would have made it so much more versatile. 
I mean, for me, it would be absolutely perfect. I could have used this for everything I did. Could have used it on the camera, could have used it on a computer. It would have been brilliant. So there's a missed opportunity there. It's a bit of a shame. So lens go if you see this video, which hopefully you will. Please add on in future revisions the ability to capture audio from the USB port. So you, you, when you plug the USB port in, it appears on your computer as a USB audio device, just like a standard USB microphone would do. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Now, since you test the audio difference with and without the, the windshield on here, let's take the windshield off. Okay, so that's out of the way now. And see if the audio sounds any different. Maybe it sounds a bit clearer now. I don't know. It might help the highs a little bit. I'm not sure. Um, but it may also mean that when I'm moving around or talking near it, it might get more wind noise. If it's indoors, you probably wouldn't need it anyway unless you're potentially going to breathe across it, like blowing through your nose or whatever. Or you know, something like this. Maybe it's an issue. I don't know. But if you take this off, obviously it's going to be a little bit less cumbersome and a bit less obvious to see because this does make it kind of stand out a bit. But it may be necessary. But if you're outside, obviously you want to use it. But indoors, like this, it may not actually matter. So I thought I'd give it a go as well without this on it in case it sounds better or in case any kind of noise like that is not an issue anyway. Now, because this microphone is based on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, it's got quite a long range. It's Wi-Fi based. It's obviously using the Wi-Fi spectrum. 2.4 gigahertz is a freely usable Wi-Fi band. So there's no reason why people can't use Wi-Fi for all sorts of purposes because it's just a unlicensed band. So they're also using this for the communication, which means if you've got Wi-Fi signals or a lot of Wi-Fi signals in the region, it may cause issues with range. But in situations like this, I don't really see it being an issue. It's only you know a meter or so away. You know, if you've been in the same room, it probably doesn't matter. If you're trying to do something outside, maybe it'll matter more. But this is advertised having like a 70 meter range, and my own experience of Wi-Fi is it does have quite a good range on it. So you don't really need to worry about it, I don't think, you know, for most circumstances, if you're just doing blogging, you know, or doing this sort of situation like I'm doing in this room here, I'm doing some really close-up stuff with the camera, doesn't matter. If you're doing stuff longer range and you've got two people, one person doing the camera, one person in front of the camera, like a reporter kind of style, then maybe you might find that, hey, you need more range. But I don't think this is going to be an issue. I think this has got plenty of range for that stuff, because otherwise you've got the camera, which is going to have a massive lens on it, zoomed right in, and that probably isn't going to be happening if you're using one of these microphones. I don't really think that's really an issue. So I'm pretty confident that this is a good thing. It seems to be good. I've done some basic audio testing on my computer to make sure it actually works and that sort of stuff. I'm fairly happy with it so far. But anyway, let me know what you think. Comment down below. Tell me what you think about the audio quality with this compared to my camera. And just to remind you, I'm going to unplug the camera one now and go back to the standard camera microphone. Okay, there we go, back to the standard camera microphone, same distance, nothing else has changed. So it gives you an idea of what the difference is between having a microphone near you versus what's on the camera if you're not using a remote microphone. Let me know what you think. Comment down below, give me a like if you like the video, subscribe if you've not been here before, and click the bell icon too to get notifications about my new videos. And I'll catch you later, thanks for watching.